Diabetes is a, is a very increasingly prevalent worldwide disorder, also more so in this country also, in which there is significant metabolic disturbance so that the blood sugar starts to rise. And if it is elevated for a long period of time, uh, then it can lead to various complications uh, in people who have the disease, whether it is type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes. And some of the major complications include eye problems, including blindness, uh, problems with uh, heart attacks and strokes, increased risk of heart attacks and strokes, uh, increasing kidney problems, uh, including kidney failure, requiring dialysis and kidney transplantations, liver problems, in, including fatty liver disease, leading to liver damage and liver transplantations, and of course neuropathy, uh, causing nerve damage, uh, leading to injuries, amputations, uh, foot infections, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So, so really, uh, it affects uncontrolled diabetes for a prolonged period of time and by that I mean over years, can, can really affect your body from the tip of your hair to the tip of your toe, mm. uh, if not properly controlled. So, and the prevalence of diabetes is increasing worldwide um, and also in this country um, uh, due to various reasons. You know, for the most part, people with type 2 diabetes don't know that they have diabetes because it's a sneaky disease. It is insidious in onset and uh, it it sort of sneaks up on you because uh, mild to moderate elevation of blood sugar may be completely asymptomatic. People can have absolutely no symptoms at all uh, and that is why various organizations recommend uh, regular checks of your blood sugar when you go for your annual visit to your doctor because uh, for the most part type 2 diabetes uh, has, uh, has no symptoms. Now type 1 diabetes on the other hand which is approximately uh, one in ten of all diabetics around around the world has robust symptoms it, because they usually start acutely and uh, most people with type 1 diabetes can have symptoms of increased thirst, increased urination, weight loss and blurred vision. Uh, but for type 2 diabetes about 50 percent of all people with type 2 diabetes do not have any symptoms at onset. People with type 2 diabetes uh, you know once they are diagnosed uh, when they go to their doctor or they have symptoms, the you know 50 percent of people with type 2 diabetes may have some symptoms that includes increased thirst or some weight loss or some blurred vision. Then uh, certainly they go to the doctor, they have their blood sugars checked and appropriate treatment uh, you know initiated at that point. Um, most people with type 2 diabetes, we start with changes in their lifestyle that includes diet and increasing their physical activity levels and that itself can go a long way in reducing the long-term risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, but then a large proportion of these patients with type 2 diabetes do require some treatment which is medications and tablets from time to time, uh, at least at onset. Uh, and then that can progress to various other therapies for type 2 diabetes which includes uh, non-insulin injections and eventually insulin injections. On the other hand, type 1 diabetes at onset, almost all of them need insulin straight away because type 1 diabetes by definition is insulin dependent diabetes. And hence, uh, almost all people with type 1 diabetes need insulin right from the word go. Um, Conventionally, insulin treatment is by injections. When, when patients with type 2 diabetes may need one or two insulin injections per day. On the other hand, type 1 diabetes usually need at least two, maybe three to four insulin injections per day. Uh, and then we can talk about the artificial pancreas, which is a novel concept that is coming up uh, and is currently being tested in phase two trials uh, in this country. Uh, there's all FDA approved phase, uh, you know, phase two trials for type 1 diabetes. But eventually, I don't see any reason why the artificial pancreas, once it matures and develops, can't be also used for type 2 diabetics who need insulin. Uh, a significant part of type 2 diabetes, especially if you're caught early, um, can be uh, successfully managed with changes to your lifestyle. You know, the type 2 diabetes uh, 
part of the reason why type 2 diabetes has reached pandemic proportions, that is worldwide proportions, is that of our sedentary habits. Our diet has changed. Uh, uh, ready food, uh, cheap food is accessible easily. Our physical activity has uh, declined substantially, uh, including amongst children and adolescents. Uh, no longer do they go out to play baseball, soccer, football, etc. They play with their video games, which is you know much less involves much less physical activity. So combination of various factors uh, increases the predisposition to type 2 diabetes. Hence, reversal of some of those factors can help postpone the need for medication therapy if your type 2 diabetes is caught reasonably early. Uh, and what are these measures? These are significant changes to the lifestyle, uh, following off a, uh, a calorie con uh, contained diet, uh, so that the calories that you ingest more closely uh, balance the calories that you burn, uh, rather than taking excess calories and, and uh, fast food. Uh, certainly, and also on the other side of the equation, increasing your calories burned um, by increasing physical activity levels. And these increase in physical activity levels need not be, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, very severe or very intense. Uh, even low-grade physical activity or moderate-grade physical activity, like taking a walk every day, and and walking for a short while every half an hour every hour every one to two hours while you're at work can also help and dissipate and burn some calories um, you know calories ingested and calories burned this is one of the few places in medicine where one plus one is actually equal to two um, so that if you burn more calories than what you take in there is no force on earth that can stop you from losing weight and, and studies have shown that if, if you burn 100 calories more per day than what you take in, and 100 calories is approximately uh, a, a, a glass of skim milk is what 100 calories uh, provides. So if you can burn those 100 calories a day more than what you take in, in a year you will lose about 10 pounds. So even a minimal change in the balance between calories burnt and calories ingested can make a significant difference uh, to, the, uh, to, to, the w to the weight equation. And studies have shown, and really studies worldwide have shown, that if you lose between 4 to 7 percent of your weight, that can go substantially in, in slowing down the progression of type 2 diabetes, hence the need, hence postpone the need for you to take medications. So clearly lifestyle is a major, major uh, uh, f uh, factor that you can influence in your day-to-day -day living that can prevent the progression of, of, of type 2 diabetes. Um, and, and now apart from that, again, we have to realize that type 2 diabetes is a slowly progressive disease. And, and over time, uh, there is deterioration in type 2 diabetes. And you can slow down and to an extent also reverse the deterioration by doing the right things, eating the right food, burning adequate amount of calories so that you are in negative calorie balance. Even though that calorie balance negativity may be just 100 calories or 150 or 200 calories a day, but still if you're in negative calorie balance, that would uh, go a long way in slowing down the progression of type 2 diabetes.